Welcome back to Cindy's Library. This is Cindy, and today I'm going to talk to you about, if not the 10 best books that I read in the first half of 2023, at least the 10 of the most memorable ones. A disclaimer, this could change if I made this list tomorrow, so there is that. So let's get to it. Uh, one book is The Beatrice Prophecy by Kate Di Camillo. It has some lovely illustrations as well. This is about a girl who is found some, by some brothers at a monastery. And she, at least at first, doesn't remember anything, not even her name. The only sense they have is that she is in some trouble. But she makes friends along the way, including with an adventurous boy and an honorary goat. And one of the brothers there. And, well, as she discovers who she is, she definitely ends up on a wonderful adventure. Wonderful story about not just memory, but about the power of words and of reading. See, next one, really enjoyed the Sherwood Ring. Uh, when a girl, probably about 16 or 17, is an orphan, she's sent to live with her uncle who lives at a very old, mansion may be too big of a word for it, but a large house, a colonial house, maybe even pre-colonial. And she sees ghosts, and they are connected with the American Revolution. And most of this is their story and how she uncovers it, both by talking to them and otherwise. And there's a bit of a mystery in the current timeline, too, which these ghosts help her with as well. Also, a mystery that's also tied to the past timeline as well. Greatly enjoyed it. Ah, the Daughter of Time by Josephine Tay. Inspector Alan Grant, he is laid up because he broke his leg chasing a bad guy. Good news, he did get the bad guy. Bad news, he broke his leg and he's laid up. So to help him pass the time, uh, a friend brings him pictures of various people. Some might be photos, a lot are photos of portraits. And he's drawn to the portrait of King Richard III. So he decides to investigate King Richard III and see what he can find out about him. Is he truly the wicked uncle portrayed in Shakespeare? Or is there more to his story? Now, this one is a reread, but still loved it. Gaudy Night by Dorothy L. Sayers. Peter Whimsey and Harriet Vane book. In fact, it's mostly Harriet Vane. She gets invited back to Oxford for a gaudy night. Think a class reunion. And turns out mysterious goings on are going, are happening at the women's college that she attended. A nasty notes slid under doors and otherwise finding their way into people's pockets. A nasty notes scribbled on the walls. A destruction of property. Ah, and so Dorothy, she starts investigating this. And, of course, Peter Whimsey ends up getting involved, too, at her request. So, 
greatly enjoyed it. Olive by, uh, let's see, her full name is Dinah Maria Malak Craig. And this is the story of Olive. It's a Victorian novel. And Olive is born with a defect in her back, I believe. And so while her parents do learn how to love her, they think no one will ever want to marry her. And after her father's death, she ends up having to find ways to provide for herself and her mother, or at least increase their income. She enters the world of art and painting and actually becomes quite good at that and makes a life for herself. But is it really true that love is out of her reach? This I could not put down. And beyond that, uh, such not only inspiring just on that level of a girl and then woman making the most out of her life in spite of difficulties and limitations, but also expresses so much faith. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> the Absentee by Mariah Edgeworth. Uh, let's see, Lord Colombry. Ever since he was probably about six or so, he has lived in England. And then I think it's the Oxford could have been the Cambridge thing and all of that, like any uh, young gentleman would do. But he's actually Irish, has some dim, misty, but fond memories of Ireland. But his family's never gone back to Ireland. And so when circumstances financially seem precarious. He talks his father into allowing him to go back and actually check on all of their properties there. Also, there's a love story. Also, one large reason they've never gone back is because his mother is determined to enter English society. And being Irish, she never will, sadly. Rob Roy by Sir Walter Scott. Let's see, we have our hero Frank gets into his argument into an argument with his father over his future. He wants to follow art and literature. His father wants him to go into business. His father sends him up to his uncle to uh I'll help out there. His uncle has a lot of sons, including one in particular who seems more clever than the rest. There's also a lovely neighbor that is staying there. And of course, in the midst of all this, uh, young Frank meets Rob Roy and gets tangentially involved in the Highland uprisings. So, just loved this when I read it. Technically, this one is another reread, but it's been so long since I reread it that it's almost like reading it anew. That is David Copperfield. We start with his birth, which is great aunts, uh, finds an auspicious since he's a boy, not a girl, and she wanted a great niece to be named after her, Betsy Trotwood. Um, shortly thereafter, and yeah, maybe when he's about five years old, his mother remarries. That does not go so well in some ways. 
as how he gets out of that situation, how he becomes educated, enters society, falls in love, has several adventures, meets many people. I just absolutely loved it. So, so far, out of the year of Sanderson, uh, I just fell in love with Tress of the Emerald Sea. This has echoes of a Princess Bride. So, we actually start with our heroine, Tress. She lives on a rocky island, not much there. People are forbidden to leave, but she's actually quite content there, especially since she has her best friend, a possible love interest, Charlie. But he is sent away and is captured by the sorceress. And so after due consideration, when no one else seems willing to do anything, Tress decides no one else will, she will go rescue him. This is technically in the Cosmere, very interesting world, very interesting seas. It's 12 different seas made of spores of different colors, each of which do different things. The narrator is Hoyd, if you are familiar with him from previous Cosmere books by Brandon Sanderson. Just a very fun, light read. I absolutely loved it. It's part fairy tale, part pirate adventure. Had a great time reading this. So those are probably the, some of the most memorable things I have read in the first half of 2023. So it's been a good reading year so far. I look forward to the second half. What have you particularly enjoyed reading for the first half of 2023? Love to hear all about it down in the comments. Hope you've had a wonderful first half of 2023 and hope the second half will be as good, if not better. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's always, I always appreciate it when people do stop by. So thank you so much. So until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy. And as always, happy reading.